Good afternoon. Welcome to the research results presentation, cost effective uses of lightweight aggregate made from dredged material and construction. Our presenter today will be Dr. Relu from Kent State University. Um, there will be an opportunity to type questions in the bottom of the GoToMeeting chat pod. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in there. We'll hold them till the end, and then we'll go through all of them at that point. Um, without any further waiting, I'll let Reed take over. All right. Thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, thank you for everybody uh, to be here on this Friday afternoon, but it's beautiful outside. And uh, uh, it's my pleasure to present the final uh, the results of our project, cost-effective use of light bit aggregate made from the dredge material in construction. Uh, it started from a student study project, and uh, the Emily Applebaum, uh, she was the student got involved in the 16 math study. Uh, she received her uh, the master degree and graduate last summer, um, but she presented a paper poster uh, in OTEC last October. Um, first, I would like to give the acknowledgement to uh, all the people, you know, who give us the hands, help us to finish the project. You know, Michelle uh, coordinated the, the study, uh, the technical advisory committee, uh, like the Mickey, Dan, Hans, Steve, and team. Uh, we have the monthly meeting give up, I think, a really good advice uh, on the research project. Uh, we received materials from the James White and uh, uh, from the Cuyahoga County Port of Cleveland Port uh, Authority, uh, and also the Jason Seeds from the Curtis Brothers helped us and basically collect all the samples. Um, Joe Keppel from Toledo, Toledo Harbor, um, helped us to get a sample, a uh, stretch sample as well. And uh, I appreciate you know, the Dr. Joe and Dr. Gao and uh, Lou. Um, from the Akron and Kent State you know, help us to run some of the tests for the project. And many students are actually getting involved to help us to prepare uh, all the samples. The so Emily getting involved into the testing part, but you know, we do have to process uh, all the raw samples for the testing. Uh, here are the contents for today's presentation. So we have, uh, uh, I will spend more time on the chapter of ex experimental design, the results discussion. And finally, we can have more discussions regarding the sustainability issue and also, you know, look at the conclusion and future recommendations for the project. All right. Um, so ODOT, there's a need apply to use light bit aggregate in, the, in their project, in the project, um, to address, for example, you know, some of the bridge issues. For example, you know, we do have some the settlement on the approaching slab. Uh, we do have some issues regarding for the concrete material. Uh, I think the ODOT has the re research the need and look at some of the internal curing um, using the light bit aggregate in the rim in, in the concrete, the bridge deck. Well, but we know that um, the light bit aggregate is not cheap. And basically the average, uh, the price, the national price is about $60 per ton. <coughs> and we do have a supplier of light bit aggregate in the state of Ohio. Um, they are priced and possibly in the range of $40 per ton. So is that possible, I think, you know, for us to identify a cheaper source to produce the light bit aggregate, uh, which can be used in the, uh, for the construction? Um, that is uh, our research purpose. And actually, there's another issue uh, in the state of Ohio, all the people, especially for people who are living on the shoreline, of Lake Erie, we are facing the big challenge in how to handle the huge amount of the dredged material, or how to manage that material. There are R and basically 15 federal harbors, and there's many, I think, you know, the recreational ports. So each year they do the dredging, they're trying to keep their navi navigational channel, um, and basically they're trying to clear and basically, you know, keep certain the distance for the channel. Uh, each year, they do have to remove 1.5 million cubic yards of dredged material uh, from their navigational channel. Um, Toledo Harbor, Cleveland Harbor, and Sandusky is top three. The harbors produce and I think you know generate the most uh, amount of uh, dredged material uh, from all the harbors. Well, we do have uh, and basically state of Ohio. Passed a bill and basically by 
2020 in July, um, all the dredged material cannot be returned back to the leaked area. Um, the current, I think, the practice, especially for the Toledo, uh, we do the dredging, and we return the dredge back to the center of the lake. But however, the researchers identified that it's really bad for the uh, ecological systems of the, of the lake, especially for the nutrient level, like the phosphorus level keep increasing in the lake. It's uh, that practice that basically damage the ecosystems for the lake. It's really important for us to think about how to handle all the dredge, but you know, for the dredge, we can put that in the CDS, uh, can find the total facility. Uh, but, you know, in Cleveland, we do have uh, the long history and uh, to pile of the dredge in the CDS. Uh, for example, our samples we took from the CDF number 12, uh, but however, uh, actually there are, uh, the capacity of the CDF is limited, you know, uh, they're approaching the what happens in 100 years? What happens in just in 50, 100 years? There's a big issue for us to consider. So this project, and actually we propose trying to look at is it possible for us to recycle, reuse, or stretch back into the built environment. We look at some of the potential solutions. And also, you know, trying to meet, I think, is that possible? We can use that to make lightweight aggregate, trying to reduce the cost. Okay, that's kind of uh, the both benefits are good for the ODOT and good for the state, for the people in the state of Ohio. Well, uh, here's the objective for the project. And I actually, you know, myself, uh, I'm working with another professor, um, Professor Rich Kaufman from the Landscape Architecture. We funded by the Ohio uh, Protection Fund, Lake Area Protection Fund, to look at um, another project and basically we fabricated lightweight aggregate from the sample from the Cleveland into the green roof, and we look at some living architecture. The re research results is pretty encouraging. But however, to apply the line with aggregate into the construction, the question is the engineering property. The engineering property can meet all the standard of the spe specifications. And apparently the first objective for, for the project, trying to evaluate engineering properties of the line with aggregate made from the dredge. And then the next question, is that sustainable? We look at the economic and environmental uh, the performance of the product. Um, for the literature review, uh, we did a pretty extensive the review uh, regarding for the dredge. I uh, used dredge as uh, uh, the feedstock, the raw material produced of the cement to produce all the bricks. And basically, you know, is that possible for us to make the lightweight aggregate from the dredge? Um, and other topics like, you know, use lightweight aggregate from the dredge in the concrete uh, and how the lightweight, con lightweight con uh, aggregate can help to in uh, improve the durability, uh, strength, performance of the concrete by internal curing. Well, on all the topics, I'm not going to spend too much time uh, on that part. Um, all the information are summarized and basically in the final report. I know the final report will be published by the ODOT and uh, possibly we can just refer to uh, the final report to look at um, the results, uh, the literature review part. But I would like to point out it's not a new topic because you know, since the 1970s, the uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, there are some of the research reports released out and trying to figure out and how we can recycle, reuse or dredge back into the Build environment, there are the researchers um, trying to find out, you know, uh, how to make the lightweight aggregate. Okay, all right. But you know, for for my research for this project, we get we collect all the sample from the CDF, can find disposal facility. Um, we do have to dry all the samples, and then we sieve the sample, remove, for example. We did find some of the plastics. We found some of the plant roots. And apparently, to produce lightweight aggregate, we don't need that material. Remove some debris and basically, you know, from the sample. And then we mix. We, we dry. Uh, we have already dried the sample. We crush, grind all the sample. Remove. We do the sieving. Um, and finally, we mix the sample with with water. We, we make all the pallet. Uh, we do have one, I do have the one slide to show the process uh, for the manufacture. Um, finally, we put all the pallet in the furnace 
for the splintering uh, under the different temperature. All right, oh, well, actually here is a fabrication the process regarding for the ex experimental design. We did collect the sample from the Cleveland Harbor and uh, from Toledo Harbor. Uh, initially, you know, for the project, and actually, so we would like to focus on the Cleveland because Kent is really close to Cleveland. Um, but however, from the, uh, the research, we realized, well, you know, the Cleveland sample is pretty sandy. The strength possibly cannot meet the requirements. Uh, also, I, I do have the sample from the Toledo. Seems like Toledo sample functions pretty well. And uh, uh, based on recommendation from the tech, um, get approved from the tech, we, we did investigation um, for the dredge material from, from the boat harbors. That is a pretty, you know, uh, this is our lab, lab space. We dry all the sample. We took the sample from the Cleveland CDF number 12. Um, and we, I took four samples and basically from the Toledo Harbor. Uh, the Toledo Harbor, uh, there's two sites. One is, uh, is named New Center of Life, I believe, um, and it's really close to downtown and CDF number three uh, in the Toledo. There's two samples from the one location. The process is, you know, like we air dry, we grind all the clay, <coughs> and then and basically we do the sieving. We mix all the samples with the water to make all the balls. We air dry the ball. Here's the furnace. We put and basically all the samples in the furnace. Okay. Um, well, I, I open and basically the student uh, opened the door to take the picture. Uh, but typically, when we produce all the light with aggregate, we naturally cool down the temperature to room temperature and then we open the door. The reason because, you know, during the filtering process, if we open the door, the temperature will change, the property will be affected. Uh, I just would like to show the process regarding for the concept of filtering under the temperature above the 1000 degrees Celsius, it's a really high the temperature. Uh, after, and basically the size for the pallet we made by head is about one inch. Um, it's about one inch. Now, apparently, for the concrete applications for the aggregate, might have to meet a certain degradation requirement. So after we finish all the product, we cool all the product down to the room temperature, and we manually to crush all the samples down into the small particles. And then we just use a sieve. We get a different size, the gradations, and we mix them together in order to meet the ASTM standard, uh, and also the ODOT, uh, the material standard spec. Um, regarding you know the coarse aggregate and the fine aggregate, the, the three pictures to show the, the light with aggregate made from the Cleveland sample, Cleveland dredge. Here's the lab testing. Uh, the lab team, lab testing we proposed to evaluate the engineering properties, and apparently we we would like to find out the soil type, the so soil classification, uh, specific gravity. The lightweight, typically the lightweight aggregate with a specific gravity in the range of one point, possibly 1.2 to 1.8 below 2. The normal weight aggregate and possibly above 2.0, 2.5, something like that. For the aggregate, we looked at the loose bulk density, compacted bulk density. Uh, for the flexible application, we started some the geotechnical, um, geotechnical per performance. Uh, Professor Shakur, Abdul Shakur, one of the uh, co author for the, for the final uh, the report, and she's a professor in the Department of Geology. And we went to his lab to run some geotechnical the property tests uh, for the materials. Uh, we also started compressor ability free swell. Uh, the reason because, you know, for the lightweight aggregate, might swell uh, whenever the aggregate absorbs the water. And the organic impu uh, impurity, and uh, well, our assumption and basically that under the high temperature, there's no organic materials left. But however, that test trying to prove and basically our assumption. We looked at clay lumps and friable particles. Uh, the reason because you know if the materials are pretty uh, weak uh, when we mix all the materials and possibly some the fr uh, friable particles might generate. I mean detrimental you know, for, for the potential applications, for example, in the concrete. The loss of ignition, and actually, you know, it's 
has already been fired in the high temperature and basically the LOI should be neglected. Okay, the LA breathing is really important and we will, I will present the result. Uh, the reason because, you know, we do have some samples that not really pass the LA breathing test. The sulfate uh, softness, you know, we run the test according to the edge to the, the spec, spec. Another potential application, we are hoping the lightweight aggregate can help, can function as internal curing agent, can help increase the performance of the concrete. So the water absorption and desorption, the two, pro two properties are quite important. The two properties are really important. And we do have the ASTM standard uh, for the 171 available, uh, which can help us to measure the water desorption. Here's all the tests, but you know, here's some of the pictures to, to show all the testing methods. The soil classification is pretty quick. We found, you know, the um, Cleveland sample is pretty sandy. The sand content is pretty high. So um, we decided to run the sieve analysis. The sieve analysis is trying to classify the Cleveland sample. But for the Toledo sample, and based on the texture, the field or the clay content is pretty high. You know, uh, it's like, you know, the clay material. And apparently the typical sieve analysis does not work quite well with the uh, with clay material. So we run some experts the limit test. We run some of uh, the geotechnical analysis and test is uh, the plastic and the liquid limits. And then and basically just trying to classify um, the expert, uh, classify Toledo sample. Um, regarding for the specific gravity and water absorption rate, and here's the two equations we can use to estimate specific gravity. The method we measured and basically the um, the surface dry saturated the weight of the aggregate sample. And then, and basically, we measured submerged the aggregate, the weight. And finally, we put all the samples in the oven to dry. Based on that equation, we can calculate specific gravity. That's why I method for us to do that. And based on the information, we can calculate, we can determine the absorption rate, absorption rate of all the samples we have. Um, the STM standard were followed to measure and basically lose the bulk density and compact it, um, the bulk density. But however, you know, we only run the loose bulk density for the, for the coarse material. And uh, for the really fine aggregate, and basically we run the compacted the bulk density. Um, regarding for the undrained cohesion, undrained cohesion, uh, as I mentioned, some of the fine particles, and possibly we can use that material for the sex field. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, um, we are hoping that lightweight aggregate can help to absorb some, some kind, of, you know, the stress from the uh, compaction from the traffic. That can help release some stress. So uh, we run some, and basically that material, that possibly there's a potential can be used for the sex field. Uh, we run some and drain the cohesion uh, through the direct shear, and here's the device, and uh, uh, and basically we put all the materials into um, in a small box, and actually the dimension two inch by two inch, and then we just apply the load. Uh, we apply a horizontal load. There's create a shear plan. There's a, and basically you know the meters or the gauge to record all the data, and then we can plot all the data, trying to identify. Um, for example, the friction angle, and, uh, and also trying to find out the co cohesion, you know, the, the force between all the small particles. I will present the results uh, pretty quick. All right. Seems like it's got freeze. Seems like it keeps freezing. Let's try it again. All right. I guess the possibility of being too fast. 
I don't know, but it seems like it's not working right now. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Very good. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, Breathe really well. We do have to divide from the lab. Uh, Department of Geology, Professor Shakur's lab, and basically we put all the fun aggregate uh, into the device, and basically so then we, we just apply the load, um, and basically you know in 24 hours to look at the settlement of the material. It's kind of standard testing for the geotechnical the testing results. And uh, but at the beginning, after we put all the materials in the container, we pull the water, we pull the water to inside, and uh, the aggregate will absorb the water. The swell will occur. There's a free swell will occur, and then we do have the gauge to measure, you know, uh, the change of the volume. Organic impurity. We followed uh, the C40 ASTM standard, and basically, you know, we just uh, um, put 130 um, millimeter, uh, the fine aggregate, mixed with 3% sodium hydroxide into the container, into a um, kind of a, a container over there. Uh, and then we add, and basically the solution, the sodium hydroxide to the 200 millimeters. And then we cap it. We just, you know, to um, rigorously to rotate, I think, the container. Uh, we leave the containers overnight and possibly for over, you know, 24 hours. And then we look at the color of, uh, and basically, you know, all the solutions on the top. We compare that with a standard glass color, uh, and basically, it's a, if there's a one, two, three, four, you know, so many different colors right here, and uh, if the color is really dark, past number three, which means there are some organic contents in that solution. Um, but however, the final result proved our assumption, and basically, the, under the high temperature, uh, and basically, there's no organic left in that material. Uh, the clay lamps and the friable particles, uh, we just follow the C142, the standard method for the testing. And actually, we just, you know, um, wash the sample, use a sieve, and basically to sieve all the samples. Um, we look at, and basically all the samples stayed on the, um, and basically on the, on the sieve. We put that in the solution overnight. Um, and then we do the sieving again, wash it again to look at how, how much the material is left. LA a breathing test. Uh, that's kind of equipment you know, we have in the lab. Uh, and basically, we get five kilograms of coarse material, coarse lightweight aggregate in the sample. There's the 12 balls, steel balls inside. We run 500 rotations, 500 rotations. And, uh, and after that, we get the material, we sieve it, use number 12, the sieve. Uh, and finally, we look at the percentage percentage of the material retained retained on the sieve. Sodium sulfate thermines uh, are basically the standard test, standard test. Um, and, uh, Mickey asked me questions regarding for the size. I think, you know, regarding the gradation of the material we used, according to the ash to requirements, we looked at the particle size in the number four to the three, three eighth inch. Uh, and then and basically the 300 grams material, which we run and basically, you know, the sulfate uh, solution, sodium sulfate solution, and basically kind of the wet, dry, wet, dry five cycles. And we look at, you know, the sound needs to release all the sulfate, the test. Uh, this test is environmental chamber. Um, the title, I think, on the, the title, sorry about that, I forgot to change that. And actually, the test here is trying to measure the water desorption test water desorption. Uh, under a controlled environment, 94%, the relative humidity, <clears throat> and a 23 degrees Celsius, plus minus one degree Celsius kind of controlled environment, we measure the water content, the moisture loss, you know, lose of the moisture in that controlled environment. Now, this method we used in our lab, and actually. So the final test, we run the leaching test. Um, we run the leaching test and basically, you know, uh, the TCLP, the EPA specified, I think, the leaching test um, to match, I think, the leaching potential of the heavy metals. Uh, it's not a total 
heavy metal content, but we look at some of the heavy metal, uh, there's the potential to leach out from the lightweight aggregate. Um, the reason because, you know, especially for the sample from the Cleveland, there's always concerns regarding for the pollution or the contamination from the sample. Uh, but not all the samples contaminated. Apparently, before the beneficial re reuse, we do have to run some of the tests to make sure the sample is not contaminated. The final result, okay, here, uh, the first result is regarding for the soil uh, classification for the samples we took from the Cleveland. Um, the results here, and we can get there's more than 30%, the 30%, 31.6% um, material. Number 12, 200, the C, number 200 C, uh, according and basically, you know, the uh, spec, and if more than 30%, I think the material, uh, number 200, we can treat that as a field and the clay material. Okay, so high the field and the clay, 30%, at least for the, for the sample we took from the Cleveland. Okay, um, but you know, we do have uh, basically the, a chart. From the chart, we can classify, and I think, you know, classify of the soil. And, uh, and if we, we do have uh, uh, 68 and 8% as right here, 68 of uh, the sand and possibly the the sample uh, can be classified as sandy loom. The tag would recommend us and possibly to further to measure the field and the clay, the content uh, for the Caribbean sample. Uh, for the research team, and we uh, we didn't you know do that. And actually, we we feel like and possibly the chemical composition uh, chemical composition might be more important regarding you know the process of the fabrication. But I think it's a good suggestion in the future. I think possibly we can just further to measure uh, the silt and the clay contents and basically in the materials. Um, here's the result for the Toledo. Uh, for the Toledo, and basically we can get, we measured, we measured the plastic limit, the liquid limit. And then we determined the plastic, the index, and basically the difference between the two uh, and then we plot uh, all the dots on, on the chart. And finally, if we can classify the Toledo sample, at least the sample we collected from the Toledo, uh, is um, the clay, uh, the field clay with high plasticity. The field, field clay with high plasticity. Uh, as I mentioned, I think, you know, the chemical composition, the field, uh, for example, you know, the silica oxide, Calcium oxide, the iron oxide contains, plays a really important role to generate, I think, you know, to produce a lightweight aggregate of the mineral content. Uh, we do have two requirements for the mineral act under the high temperature to generate, to expand, uh, to generate the lightweight aggregate. The first, and basically, you know, um, under the, you know, all the materials, it can fuse. Okay, it can fuse under the high temperature, and possibly it can fuse. And the gas in that at that point, there's a gas can generate when the material or the mineral contents, you know, at, at inception, you know, at the beginning of the the fusing. But however, the material itself it should be strong enough and basically to hold all the gas and basically all the the ball and basically the pellet to be fabricated in the lab can expand. Can, expand, can generate as a lightweight aggregate. Uh, we did successfully um, produce a really light aggregate, especially for little sample. Uh, from the testing, the lab testing for the specific gravity, uh, and actually, you know, we can prove if it is a lightweight. Uh, for the total sample, I do have a picture to pretty quick, you know, some of the samples can float in the water, can float in the water. Um, but we do, we, we can get, and basically the most important, uh, you know, we compare the, our samples, we run one, two, three, four, six, six, um, the tests and compare that for the raw shell, uh, for the shell, and basically it's kind of typical. Um, one, one type of the raw material to produce, I think, the lightweight, lightweight aggregate, okay. To run, I think, the specific gravity, um, 
for my initial test, uh, my, my another project, we determined 1,100 degrees Celsius is the best um, the temperature to generate, I think, the lightweight aggregate. In order to compare, I think, the performance between the Cleveland sample and the Toledo sample, we keep the temperature. But one question, I think the research team would like to find out how the centering time to influence the performance of the aggregate, you know, the sample got centered in the furnace for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, all the way up to six hours. Okay. Um, we run the test. We get the sample, and basically it's kind of a pretty extensive the study. Uh, we measured specific gravity, and we measured water absorption rate for the samples we collected, collected from the Cleveland. We just look at the Cleveland sample. And we can get specific gravity in the range 1.41 to 1.51. It's below, and basically two is lightweight aggregate, the lightweight aggregate. Um, we plot, and basically, you know, the specific gravity with the water absorption, the read on the, on the figure right here, and we can get a specific gravity as, as water absorption increases. And basically, we can get specific gravity decreases. Um, that's pretty easy for us, you know, to understand it. And for example, you know, for lightweight, the lightweight caused by the void in the in, in the lightweight aggregate. Okay. Uh, so in other words, I think the lighter material, which means there's more void, more void, and possibly the water absorption possibly is higher. But however, the it's really interesting because you know sometimes we think the more void strength might be lower. That will influence, I think, you know, the, the strength of the aggregate. Okay. All right. And basically, another figure we just plot the uh, <laughs> gravity against the time. Um, we we can get just one point at one hour, uh, and basically, you know, the specific specific gravity. It's the lowest. Um, it's not. It's not required. And basically, for, from this project, and basically, you know, to to understand why. But you know, there are some assumptions. I uh, would like to, you know, I will run some additional tests to take to look at the microstructure for the samples uh, taken at one hour and understand why it has the lowest uh, the specific gra gravity over there. Um, but you know. Because at one hour, the specific gravity is the lowest. And possibly there's a, the void, there's a lot of void in that the aggregate. And possibly that sample might be have the lowest the strength. Okay. Uh, in order to keep consistent throughout the project, we just, you know, we center all the samples for one hour in the lab. We keep just one hour of the centering time uh, for all the samples. Okay. Um, so first, the results, and basically regarding for the uh, Toledo sample and the Cleveland sample, uh, some of the additional tests, additional tests. Um, here's a picture to show there are some of the samples made from the Toledo. Uh, the it, it can float in the water. It can float in the water. Um, but however, in the testing, what we did, uh, apparently we do have to crush all the sample. We crushed all the sample. Um, we exposed all the pore in the water, and basically some of the samples got crushed. We can get, we can see that it's extinct in the water. Uh, we test, and basically, you know, this, we took the samples from the gridded, the coarse aggregate, and the fine aggregate. And we run the tests here, and we can get a specific gravity for the Toledo sample is 1.25 and 1.35. For the Cleveland sample, it's 1.34 to 1.44. Okay. Um, Here's the 80%, 90%, 100%. Now, that kind of uh, the testing is kind of interesting because you know, initially we thought, well, possibly you know the salt and clay contents is more important than the sandy content in the in the material. And then you know for the clay sample, there's only 30% of salt clay. We just use 80% the salt clay from the Cleveland sample and a 30% of uh, the fine sand from the Cleveland to make and basically the, the pallet lightweight aggregate. 
90% theoretically from the Cleveland sample, 100% the theoretically from the Cleveland uh, to make the, uh, the pallet, make the light bit aggregate, and we can get um, the results here, and, uh, and we can get the water absorption rate, water absorption rate. But it's really interesting. The reason because, you know, um, the Toledo, the sample specific gravity is lower, but the water absorption is lower too, it's lower too. And apparently it's under the high temperature and basically it's on the surface of the aggregate and basically there's a, a it's kind of a type of glass and the generate formed on the surface of the aggregate. It does not really absorb too much water. Okay. All right. So next, the results uh, regarding for the loose bulk density, uh, as I mentioned, and basically we measured the coarse aggregate uh, for the total number one, number three, and basically for the Cleveland samples. And we can get for the bulk density um, in the range of 50 for 52 pounds per cubic feet to 63 pounds per cubic feet. And uh, we can measure the water content as well. So um, that's kind of uh, the typical results, but we can compare that with the compacted density as well. The next compacted bulk density for the, the fine aggregate. Uh, for that testing, we, we, we do have to change the water content from the 8% to 36%. The reason because, you know, when we do the compaction, the water, the content will really influence, I think, the unit bit. And finally, we look at the dry bit, the dry bit. Uh, apparently, the samples, especially for the fine aggregate, has really the high the water absorption rate. The peak shows at 32%, 32%, and because we have the highest, uh, the com compact, compact is about density, the results for the Toledo number one. Um, the testing, and basically, you know, we only run the fine aggregate for the Toledo sample. The reason because, you know, the later we run the LA, a breathing test, and I can let you know, uh, first, the Cleveland sample does not really pass, I think, you know, the LA, a breathing test. It's pretty weak, even though we, we utilize, the, you know, 100% theoretically to make the light weight aggregate. Uh, there's only one sample, you know, to run the test. It's right here, the LA a breathing test. Um, the 40% passing rate is kind of uh, the standard for us to tell if the aggregate is strong um, enough or not. But basically, the Toledo number one and number three uh, have uh, uh, the 33% the loss. Well, you know, for the Cleveland sample, um, and basically, that's not, you know, field in all the tests. But but, you know, from the testing, we realized that because, you know, we keep increasing the center ring time, and apparently, and if we increase the temperature, for example, you know, we said 1,100 degrees Celsius. Now, if we set temperature higher, and possibly the 1,400 degrees Celsius, and possibly we can use the Cleveland sample, we can produce a good the product. Um, but the issue is possibly high temperatures, the extended, the centering time, which means the cost of the product will be, will be increased. So um, sometimes we do have to consider some of the trade-off and uh, we run the test, uh, the final, the sustain, uh, the economic study, environmental study, and based on um, the lab testing and basically for the uh, one hour of centering time, so 1,100 degrees Celsius, that, that temperature. Um, even though, you know, the current testing results failed, but I propose, and basically there are still potential applications for the Cleveland sample. For example, you know, we can add some clay, some, uh, possibly we can choose 90% the dredge, 10% clay, <clears throat> and we can add some of the mineral uh, mixtures in the raw material. We can still produce a good product. But, you know, the Toledo seems like, you know, uh, the sample functions better than Cleveland sample here. And during the cohesion, uh, there's two tests, one for the Toledo number one uh, and the Toledo number three. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, for direct shear, uh, we apply the weight 25, 50, and 75 pounds. We measure basically the shear force. Uh, we measure the strain as well. And then we can plot the three, the peak point on the curve, on the curve. And then from the curve, we can determine the angle of friction. The typical, you know, for the sand and 
and all the greens, the typical the angle of friction is 40 to 45 degrees. But you know, because it's a fine aggregate, uh, it's, it's kind of angular, small greens, the angle of friction, and basically from the testing we have here, the, it's bigger, it's larger. The angle of friction is about 52, uh, I don't remember exactly the number, but it's about 52 degrees. It's higher than the typical, I think, the sand number. Well, of the rebounds, we get about 7, 5 to 7 percent. So, and basically, the, the volume will go to expand when the uh, light, with, light with aggregate absorb all the water, absorb the water. Uh, the consolidation rebounds, um, as I mentioned, you know, we just keep loading the samples. We measure the settlement, so what happens, and then we, uh, the pressure we applied is quarter ton per square foot, half ton per square foot, all the way to the 16 ton per square foot, use all the load. Uh, and we can get, you know, the compacted, um, the density, uh, pounds per cubic feet, and a pound of belief at 16 ton is about 80, 84, um, 84 pounds per, per cubic feet. Organic impurity, uh, and we can get all the samples we tested, it's all clear, and on the top, and basically, you know, which proved, and basically there's no organic impurity uh, in the samples. Uh, for the clay lamps and friable particles, and we can get uh, the rebound uh, right here. According to the standard, ESTM standard, that's 2%. Uh, you know, after testing, I think, you know, the clay lamps and friable particles should be less than 2%, less than 2%. And we can get, and basically, the total number one, number three, passed all the tests. 100%, um, I think, the, the field clay from the Cleveland sample, 1.2%. And 100%, uh, with six, six hours, the center ring time, there's only the 0.9%. Um, but however, the, the other two samples, 80%, 90% failed the test. Uh, sodium sulfate. Um, we run the tests for the Toledo and the Toledo number one and the Toledo number three. Uh, the reason because you know the only the Toledo sample passed the LA breathing test. We didn't run the tests for the Cleveland, Cleveland sample. Uh, the final results is uh, the loss is 3.2 percent for the Toledo number one and the 4 percent loss for the Toledo number three. Uh, the standard requires a 5 percent loss after five cycles. Um, the both both samples. Past, I think the, the spec, the spec. Water desorption. Uh, we run the test from the, the water desorption test. We run the, the test in the environmental chamber, and basically we can get um, here's the water absorption rate for the samples we tested, uh, and basically it's the same sample. Uh, if we, we assume all the samples have the same the water absorption rate, and then we put all the samples in the environmental chamber. Uh, for 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, and then we can get the water desorption. And we can get the sample absorbed 26% the water, and there's 24% and basically released. Uh, there's more than, and possibly it's close to 90% um, water released from the sample. This, this, that's good because you know we we need you know um, for the internal curing uh, the light with the ag aggregate can release all the all the moisture to and possibly cement can facilitate the hydration of the cement. That re results are pretty encouraging and basically that's a potential uh, for us to apply the product for the internal internal curing of the concrete. Uh, that's results for the Toledo number number three the samples. Okay, it's uh, it's more than 90 percent of the water. The moisture got released back to the environment. For the leaching test, uh, for the leaching test, <coughs> actually the leaching test, we measure the the heavy metals. Uh, the test was performed by a, a consultant helped us to measure the heavy metal the contents. Uh, and actually, we we measured the raw samples, censured sample, the raw the cleaning sample, and censured cleaning sample. Uh, majority sample of the testing, the results ND means not de detected. And basically, there's kind of a detected. Um, here's the standard, but you know, majority of the results are not detected. 
But however, so we, do, we did find there are some the cadmium and chromium, there's two um, heavy metals element uh, have high the contents. But however, for the centered, we didn't really detect some of the heavy metal. Uh, we measured the heavy metal leached out, and basically there are the assumptions inside, and the really high the temperature when we center, and possibly the light could aggregate, and possibly you know the heavy metal got fixed, you know got fixed um, inside of the light bit aggregate by the microstructure of the light bit aggregate. Um, above is all the tests in the lab. Which means, you know, a very quick summary. Uh, there are some encouraging the results. Um, we feel like the total sample uh, classified as a sealed plate with high plasticity. Um, that product uh, we can produce, a, you know, a light with aggregate with a pretty good performance. The Cleveland sample is pretty sandy. Uh, we can take advantage of the sealed clay and a positive 30% sealed clay. We can produce light with aggregate, but however, um, we might have to change some, some of the parameters, centering time, the centering, the temperature uh, to produce a light with aggregate to make it work. Um, but apparently, you know, the, um, if we can figure um, the cost of the product and possibly the total sample will be, might be cheaper, might be cheaper. So the next, based on the results, and uh, we run some the economic study, the cost study. Uh, we run some the environmental impact study, and you know it's kind of student project, and uh, Emily did a fantastic job, um, and basically to measure uh, considered, in, for example, transportation, considered, and basically all the equipment, considered the labor cost, uh, just consider the different production the environment. Um, the additional or the detailed information can, you know, we can refer to the final report. But however, for the three conditions, for example, you know, for the facility per hour, um, all the equipment we can produce 50 ton, 100 ton, 200 ton. Here's the, the, the cost of the product. Uh, I think compare, I think, you know, the, um, the typical, the lightweight aggregate, I think this cost is pretty competitive, uh, especially, you know, for the product supplied by some suppliers in the state of Ohio uh, in the $40 range. And if we have the overhead, for example, you know, um, the overhead here, uh, and possibly, I guess, uh, the product made from the dredge, you know, can be, the cost can be as low as uh, possibly in the $30, $35, below $40 to be competitive to uh, other product. Um, based on the cost, we can run the economic uh, environmental impact study. The method that we looked at is the economic input output. Uh, it's a tool developed by the researchers from the Carnegie Mellon uh, University. EIOLC is pretty simple, a uh, really simple the tool. Uh, we can estimate uh, basically you know, the, uh, the pollutant CO2 emissions uh, and other the, the sulfate oxide and basically the um, other pollutants from the production production per year and based on and basically you know the the price we just input the cost uh, we can estimate some some environmental impact all right the final conclusion on a pretty quick summarize of the lab testing um, for the Cleveland sample uh, classified as sandy loom the specific gravity is 1.34 to 1.51 we can still produce light with aggregate use the Cleveland sample but as I mentioned you know um, the sample filled in the LA of breathing test. The sample filled in the LA of breathing test. So for the transportation the project and possibly, um, you know, based on the fabrication conditions, the 1,100 1, degrees Celsius one hour does not really meet all the requirements. But as I mentioned, that's a potential for us to change some of the fabrication, um, the conditions to make the samples work. Uh, but however, the cost might be uh, increased a little bit. For the Toledo samples, um, the raw material is classified as sealed clay with high plasticity. Um, and a specific gravity is much lower than the Cleveland sample. The water absorption above, I think, you know, the, is about 14% to 16%. The loose bulk density is 
is about 53, uh, 52, 54, 55 pounds per cubic feet. Um, performed pretty well and passed the ROE of breathing test. There's a high angle of friction because you know the the sheep and you know, we crushed all the sample. You know, we crushed all the sample and basically can generate all the angular, the green size. Uh, organic, there's no organic materials in the sample. Uh, you know, in the test for the sulfur attack and basically to show the, the high and basically of <coughs> good performance, a good performance. Um, so there's a high water desorption. There's no heavy metal uh, detected and basically there's no heavy metal leaching detected from the testing. Uh, also, the cost effective uh, is kind of competitive for the product. Um, for the Caribbean sample, you know, apparently for the test, we didn't really pass, I think, the LA breathing test. But actually, there's a, one of my projects at Kent, I'm still working with uh, my, well, uh, my collaborator. Uh, we can produce and basically the green roof materials. I use the Caribbean sample. Uh, the reason because you know, the strength is not a big concerns regarding the, we just put that on the growth media of the root top. Um, but however, you know, just compare the two per that the Toledo uh, has a little bit better the performance than the uh, Cleveland sample. Okay, um, so that's all the results on our head. And uh, uh, if you have any questions, I think I'll be happy to, uh, to answer your question. Uh, it's a, I, my personally, I learned a lot from the whole process, I think, in the past one year. Uh, 16 months, I think, the project, there's a pretty extensive the testing results in the collected, can show, can contribute to, uh, I think, the scientific community, some of the results we can present. Thank you so much for your attention. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, how many uh, specific gravity tests did you guys run um, to produce the chart that you displayed there? Um, well, typically, you know, we get the, um, we follow the ESTM standard, we sample, uh, we produce a lot of uh, the basic lightweight aggregate, we just sample it randomly. And then, and the basics, we run the test for one test to plot, to generate one data point, one data point. Okay, so, um, one, so one test for one test. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, we just select all the samples randomly right. from the large quantity of uh, the samples we produce in the lab. The material, material that's being dredged, is it coming from runoff, wave action, or combination of both? Uh, sediment. You know, basically, you know, in, the, in Cleveland, the Cuyahoga River is just uh, I think nine miles right. of navigation channel. And basically, you know, the Army Corps the engineers, they do the dredging. Uh, then they pump the slurry and basically to the um, the slurry to the um, the CDF. Um, we took the sample from the CDF number 12. So and basically that's kind of sediment from the Cuyahoga River, the bottom of the river. Okay. I just had a question too about the. Um this, this came from the LA abrasion test. It looks okay. like you centered the 100% uh, silk clay fraction of the uh, Cleveland material um, at six hours. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, why did you choose six hours? Um, we only run one test for six hours. And apparently, if the six hours failed, and apparently, you know, for the five hour, we will not pass the test. So we just run and basically to see. Um, did you base that off of the specific gravity change, or you were just thinking worst case scenario kind of so thing? So worst, worst the case worst scenario. scenario. Yes, okay. the worst case scenario. So if six hours failed, you know, cannot pass the that test. You know, for four hours, right. you know, three hours cannot pass the test. Makes sense. Um, and for your sustainability, the cost study. Was that for a centering time of one hour? One hour, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we just keep consistent, you know, based on the assumption, uh, you know, the fabrication, fabrication, the seams fabrication, the condition at the lab. Okay. Um, for, in the real conditions, apparently, you know, we might have to, for the large scale, uh, we might have to run some of the, the trials, tests, 
apparently in the field is not an exact one hour, but however, the, the contribution of the study is we just give you know, a framework. We can change some of the parameters. We can quickly estimate the cost. Can you describe the sintering process? Oh, sure. The, um, the sintering process actually is after we make the ball, we, dry, we air dry all the pellet, and then we put the pellet in a furnace. In the lab, we have the box furnace, uh, and basically the furnace supplied by Central, uh, Central Tech, uh, that's one firm from the uh, Strong Wheel. Uh, the furnace, and basically it's, you know, it's box furnace. We preheat the temperature, we preheat all the samples to 550 degrees Celsius. Um, we preheat the process trying to remove all the crystal, uh, the water content, and basically in the, in the aggregate. And then so we just read the temperature and pass it to 1,100 degrees Celsius for one hour. One hour. Uh, we keep consistent, consistent for all the samples. And you're only centering portions of the dredge material, or you say you have 100% silk clay, or, or are, you, are you centering and making patties out of the dredge material? Uh, all the pallet made from the dredge. Okay. And uh, so 80%, 70%, 100% that indicates the sealed and clay content. And basically, you know, the pellet made from 100% sealed clay I saved from the clipping sample. Yeah. Okay. And then the next, the, some of the patties, some of the samples, with 70% the sealed clay saved from the clipping sample. So the, the Cleveland dredge Failed the LA abrasion in Toledo Pass? Yes. Have you done LA abrasion on other similar lightweight aggregates to know that all lightweight aggregates pass the LA abrasion? Yes, basically, well, the ODOT spec specifies in order to utilize that product into the construction, there's a 40% the passing rate, you know, 40% of you know, all the LA abrasion. Uh, the loss should be less than the 40% in order, in order to be used in the construction. We just compared that with the with the uh, the standard. Yes, I'm sure you know for other product, you know, they can pass the forty percent. Like yeah, yeah. Okay. Did your T clip results come out anything? I guess I I saw you did it. I didn't see it. Did they compare favorably to regulatory limits? Oh, uh, which test? Your T clip testing. T -T 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 oh, leaching test. Oh, uh, okay. The T. Um, that test here are the results right here, and that's standard and basically is right here. Okay. The Ohio, yeah. the primary, the maximum, maximum contamination level level for the drinking water, um, and, the, and basically they just compare that with standard. How, how consistent do you feel like the material within the disposal facilities are? Because I mean, obviously. You know, this is a you know small uh, subset of the sure. material out of sure. a large disposal facility. Yes. Um, how well do you feel these sites are char characterized? Okay. I mean, you know, while yes, some of the Cleveland material is is sandy, and uh, we've classified it as uh, you know sandy being loom a, for the sand right yeah. of a of a certain soil type. Uh, what what's the consistency like in these uh, disposal facilities? Uh, the first step for the Toledo sample. Uh, I took a sample from the different locations. It's pretty consistent, and possibly because you know the west part of the Ohio, you know there's a farm in the industry. I think the soil is like more like the clay, mm -hmm. much finer. For the Cleveland, I think the sand content is kind of uh, a pretty high. For the CDF, for the Cleveland, it's a huge, it's a 104 acre. You know, for the CDF, for the pictures I showed on the presentation. Right. Now, actually, you know, the engineer, the engineer, the CDF. The one side is higher, the other, the other end, I think the, the east part, the elevation is higher. And then they, they pump all the slurry on the CDF, and you know, they, in order to dewater all the, de -water all the slurry. And then the, we can get, and basically, you know, on the east part, um, we do have some of the results. And actually, the east part is pretty, you know, the sand contains much higher than the material on the west part. But we know that in some of the area, the you know the aggregate, uh, not aggregate, the dredge 
it's kind of consistent just in one area because you know generated by by the flow. Right. Um, but however, the collimation sample, uh, the tornado sample, you know, uh, all the samples we collected from the different locations, you know, to show pretty consistent results. Yeah. And I noticed on the uh, Toledo sample, you, you noted that it was a uh, high plastic uh, uh, clay. silk clay. Yes. But I didn't see that it was the was the Cleveland stuff non-plastic. Um, well, we, that's kind of different is the testing method to be applied. <laughs> the okay. um, apparently for the Cleveland sample, we just use a sieve test. Okay. Sieve analysis. Okay. So you right. We, we do not measure the plasticity of uh, the Cleveland sample. Okay. Oh, okay. what we can do is we can just measure the plasticity for the field of clay from the Cleveland. Right. Right. But but it's kind of different is test. Mm -hmm. Oh no. <laughs> Do you know if the dredge material that you sample and tested is being used for anything anywhere in construction? Uh, that's a goal of the EPA. The reason because you know if not and possibly by twenty twenty we are going to uh, have a big problem. <laughs> so uh, I went to a workshop um, in the year of two thousand fifteen. I think the meeting was there. Uh, I think the EPA would like to have all the State holder from the community, the whole state of Ohio, and trying to look at a beneficial use of the dredge. Our goal is trying to find kind the of potential applications, and we can recycle, reuse that material in, in the built environment uh, to be used anywhere. That's the goal. But however, the EPA might have to develop all the all the uh, all the rules, regulations, and apparently some product, especially historical, historic, you know. Uh, the CDF in Cleveland, some layer might, you know, of the dredge might be contaminated, and uh, we there's a fear from the people, you know, to think about what happens if the product is contaminated. Um, from the test here, now if we can select the right source of material, and there's a great potential for us to utilize that material back in, in the built environment. So I think the answer is no. The answer is, I think that, <laughs> no, I guess, no. you know, the EPA should answer the question, give you the, give you the, the definite answer, yes or no, but my suggestion is. Right now, the answer is no, correct? Um, <coughs> Chris, I would say, no, I would I say that it's necessarily no. I know Kurtz Brothers has a processing facility that's clean. Supposedly. Well, the EPA actually designated all of the sites Sure, yes. Yeah. Try to use the still on the thing that I was having a project and it was still That actually is still on the facility. That's part of the issue. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I, I know the project, I think in Cleveland, you know, the Cross Brothers just recycle, reuse all the sand um, and the basics in, in the construction per project, uh, for the ODOT project. I guess you know for this, this project we just show there's a potential you know yeah. uh, but we do have uh, other people think about in the solution to address right. you know this the dredge material management issue. Okay, no other questions. Okay. Wrap it up. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for your attention. Really appreciate. It. Thank you.